I'm Timmy. I'm Justin. And I'm Nathan. And this is Three Old Tech Dudes. What we got over there? What is this thing? So this is a, another one of those 8-bit era, non-8-bit computers, um, which I saw as a kid, but I never had you know the money to buy because they were kind of expensive at the time. Uh, this is the TI-99 slash 4A. There was a TI-99 slash 4 that came out in the 70s. This actually came out like 80 or 81. Um, and this one's in really good shape, too. I mean, there's really nothing wrong with it. It is I very clean. clean. Because I'm using Atari joysticks, mm -hmm. <coughs> so I had to get the splitter put on the side of this thing, which you can buy a little board, and it, it hilariously cost about as much as one of the games. Um, <laughs> so I have TI Invaders in here right now, which it, when you see this, it's <laughs> it's Space Invaders. Oh, yeah. um, and I've got a, I have four other games with this thing. I've got Attack, or sorry, The Attack, Tombstone City, it's Upside Down Car Wars, <laughs> and... Was it Blasto? Blasto. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I've, I have played these. They all work, too. So Awesome. The, um, and I'm actually trying to collect some more of this. So, this is part of my 80s 8-bit um, slash just old computer line of stuff. And then in yeah. this case, it's actually... Um, so, yeah. Looks like it's released in what seventy nine. Yeah, it says yeah, here. And this, that was the that original was the four, one. and then the four A was released in June nineteen eighty one. Yep. So that's, that's it. the month and year my parents got married. Wow. <laughs> so they could have bought one of these on could their have. honeymoon. They could have. Um, so yeah, this thing came out, and it was one of those computers that you would think would be eight bit, but it's actually sixteen. No. Yeah. Um, it came out. Uh, it's, as far as I know, it's the only thing that uses this processor. That may not be exactly right, but it's one of those. It's a rarely used processor. The original 994 used the uh, processor as well. It's a it's TI processor. I can't yeah. remember. That. It's TM something. Yeah, it's it's like its own thing. Um, it's a TMS 9900 microprocessor. Yeah, and it for is for 16-bit home computer, and yep. it has its own. TI's own designed video display controller. Yep, which works pretty well. We're we're recording it's it on not laptop bad at all. here, so. so you'll see that. Um, yeah, and this thing—it's one of those computers that this one actually needs a little bit of cleaning. We notice that the power switch is a little hinky sometimes, mm -hmm. but that's okay because mm -hmm. you know it's it's one of those that it's been around for quite a while. <laughs> oh, anyway. it's a really nice looking case too. It's big and hefty and very yeah. Texas Instruments of the era. So it really is. It says um, it came out about the same time as the Vic twenty. It looks like about well, I don't know, I think the twenty Vic twenty came out in eighty, but it's clear just looking at the displays you can see here that it's <laughs> Probably a bit more advanced. It's certainly not just 23 columns of text across. That's a big difference. Yeah, this so. thing actually has a really good video display on it. And the the funny thing is, if you look at the keyboard, you'll notice that like there's some missing keys. Like, where's backspace? Yeah, mm -hmm. I noticed that. That's, but and that's actually the first thing I noticed. You got like function in here, and you uh, get, so it's got it combos is, to get you. It's like horribly yeah, inconvenient. That's, that's rough. Um, and it is it's kind of different but it's you know but you know think about back then too though because mm -hmm. like everyone's keyboard was terrible at oh, that yeah. time i mean like no one had really there was no yeah, apparently the 99.4 had a chiclet keyboard like the atari 400 and yeah people i don't know i can't imagine trying to actually do anything useful with that well the atari mm -hmm. 400 it wasn't even chiclet it was a membrane well, keyboard yeah thing <laughs> so it's even worse <laughs> um yeah the uh it, the, the Atari 400 keyboard and the ZX81 about mm -hmm. have the same type bad keyboard, too. Um, and I, I guess it says it's a calculator-style keyboard, but that's not any better. So. Yeah. And this this keyboard here it's, itself actually is a pretty good keyboard. Yeah, um, it's got really big keys. They're very square. Yeah. <laughs> a little bigger than um, they are on some others. Yeah, and at least, at least the, um, the QWERTY layout is right. Right. Yeah. So everything is generally in pretty much the right place. Yep, it's got um, the layout of the era that's pretty typical, except it yeah. actually has an asterisk over the eight key like a modern PC does. A lot of uh, the Commodores yep. and Ataris did not have that. Hmm. No, so, and you know, and I like remember one character had, was over eight, but they had their own separate um, asterisk key. Yeah, but at the time, this was you know this was one of those computers that you know I friends yep. of mine had and. 
you know, you kind of drool over because the graphics on this thing are actually really good. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. this game it's playing right now. It kind of got a slow good. start because ti protected the development information initially they oh, tried yeah. to keep it all to themselves and then produce it all yeah. while commodore yeah. had already been out with the pet and atari had already atari was initially like that with the 400 800 too yeah. but they pretty quick it's like oh maybe we do need to get this out there to get more software available yeah that and hurt the, ti as as did the rather large price over the top of the mm, commodores oh my yeah and well and then like so commodore mel a commodore right. and the ti people uh, had a bit of a falling out because they were really gouging Commodore yep. on some of the stuff. Con calculator so, chips, especially. Yeah, they uh, they came back and basically just just ruined this thing in the market because they this did. thing was <laughs> even though it's a good so I think it sold. I didn't see the number. It sold for over a thousand dollars and at the time, and then Commodore had come to market with the Vic Twenty, which sold for like 299 two, or something. Two ninety nine originally. <laughs> it was like killing. And it, it wasn't near the computer this is, but then it became a you know they said they called it a race to the bottom when the c64 came out they just kept slashing prices slashing prices and it drove texas instruments out of the home computer market completely and forever oh yeah they've never come back to so it. they had this one and then they released an upvert updated version yep. ti 99 slash the 4A. it looks about the same <laughs> except it's pla- white plastic mm-hmm. and yeah it's gone yep yeah the funny thing is like these aren't cartridges they're command modules. Command ah. modules. That's how they're labeled. Uh, you know what? I kind of like that. I do too. Yeah. They're um, and they're all serial <laughs> number tools. For the- Home computer command module. It says hmm. assembled in USA. That's cool. So. Yeah. <laughs> so this one's a 1981. Mm-hmm. So they're all like dated too, which is this is 1980. Um, yeah. So these are fundamentally not really any different of the cartridge design from like anyone else right Mm -hmm. these fit in the front which is kind of neat Mm -hmm. um you know and some you know they they look good they do Mm -hmm. you know this oh yeah we see space invaders looking good there and yeah it's been playing some audio there and the viewers have seen ti invaders ti invaders sorry 1981 texas instruments invader options this is actually really cool this was fairly common for games back then, too. Everybody would kind of make their own. I'll take a swing at this. Oh. Let's see if his joystick's any good. Yeah, the joystick needs cleaned. Oh, it does. <laughs> yeah, it's got oh, it's got the going to kill your thumb button. It's so hard to push down and get going. Oh. Well, this is a closer. nice playing Space Invaders clone, though. This is nice. It is actually really good. It really, really plays good. really nicely. The... Um, the Wrecked uh, ship at the bottom is a nice touch there. I know when it keeps your wrecked ship on the one side and rolls another one out. Oh. <laughs> That's neat. Let's see if I can get this. Ha <laughs> ha. That's cool. What else has it got? Yeah. So I've got, you know, various of the games. Of course, uh-huh. it, it can default into. Uh, let's see if I can get out of this. Now I think I actually have to reset it. Let's see if it resets right. <laughs> Should. Last time it didn't, it didn't like us when we did this. Yeah, we got it. There we there go. <laughs> um, so let's go to basic. Of course, okay. it's got basic. Yeah. Um, it is rather, rather simple basic. So I mean, you could do the the proverbial ten it's basic print, basic. Whatever. Yeah, it's right. basic basic. Um, but it's not a bad rendition of basic. No. Do you not, know what dialect it is? I didn't ever look that up. Is it a dialect of Microsoft Basic or one they made I, on their own? I'll look I it up. Honestly, here. I'm don't curious. remember. Um, that always catches my fancy. Yeah. Silly little oh, coder. Let's yeah. see. I oh, believe I'll dig her up it here. might be. If I can figure out how to run the keyboard, that's terrible. TI Basic uh, is an anti compliant basic programming language. Yeah. TI Basic, in contrast, it says here on Wikipedia, in contrast to most basics found on contemporary microcomputers, TI Basic does not trace its history to Microsoft Basic, oh. but instead was a TI developed interpreter. Following the emerging minimal ba- minimal basic standard being created by ANSI and ECMA or ECMA, that's cool. Well, wow. so it's based on it's in turn based on the original Dartmouth Basic from the '60s. So it's retro. Hmm. It's got some really early roots. So yeah, I can see we got a few keys I need to go oh, yeah, clean. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got some keys I got to clean. But the display's very nice for a computer that debuted in 1980 mm-hmm. or was designed in 80, and it's still using the same display chip for the original 99.4. So yeah, um, so the basic underneath internals are pretty much the same on both machines, according to what I've read. So yeah, I'd say there's not much difference between the 99.4 and the 99.4a. Keyboards and improvements. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, some just basic improvements. It's like the last version of this. Really, it's not that much difference. Except keyboard parts look better. Sure. <laughs> this one needs clean. <laughs> um, Let's pop another cartridge in there. See what other display graphics. I, uh, this is a computer I've never been around at all until now. Yeah, so. and it's one that I had always wanted to play with, but mm -hmm. I just never could get to. I can, come on. There we go. <laughs> so Car <we're>, Wars. <laughs> fancy. Oh boy! Oh. <laughs> the demos are as good as just playing it. <laughs> Neat. Well, you really zip around there. This is a. Uh, oh, there's oh. a game on the Atari 2600 that's similar, explodes. but with not as many pads. You know, the gulls did not hit the other car. Yeah. You know? You know, single joystick push will move it or whatever. And you just gotta try to avoid the other car. That was close. Yeah, the explosions are good. So. It's yeah, literally running. Fly off. It's literally running the same demo every time. Yeah, yeah. But that's not bad. <laughs> oh, well, that time's different. That that's impressive. Yeah, the, the oh, it's got a whole instruction off. screen. The parts that's flying sharp. off of that are actually really <laughs> nice because they obviously cross. So that's car wars. Batteries, what so else you got there? They just start the, shoveling through. Yeah. <laughs> there is Tombstone City. And there are a lot of games. Today. I don't remember what Moby Games had on this, but it was quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, two. Um, I have to look. Well, we'll put that down there. But we'll find Moby Games. Mm -hmm. Music. Three levels: yeah. novice, master, and insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty wild. I think you, you said listen to that well. music. You just dropped your iPhone. This is. Yeah, this is almost down. like a simulation or something. This is cool. Yeah, it's it's very. Uh, oh God! Do we do we move? Move? Oh, we do move. Yeah, I wonder what the goal is. We'd have to read the book, wouldn't we? Oh, you move those things or something? Sold. Thank you. You and your naked. I think phones. I was just attacked by an alien. <laughs> yeah, I think the only so. person I know that doesn't use a phone case. Or some sort of bird. What is that? What is happening? Oh, you blew up stuff. I mean, even in Tombstone City, you're flying a spaceship. This is the early 80s video gaming for you. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Okay, Cactuses guess, yeah. and spaceships. Oh, all right, that's cool looking. I like yeah. the intro music. It's not bad. It's different. I'm it's fairly impressed with the little music. TI box here. Now, they had additions onto this. So you could put a synthesizer module off the side of this, like your voice synth. Then there was a whole major box that gave you like all kinds of connectivity because there's very little connect there's like one little port I see. Oh. and the if you got that box it would the speak and spell that. which we've done the uh speak and read on this channel yep. before mm -hmm. um they made a module based around that chip that you could do voice synthesis synthesis yeah. with this too oh that's so, cool yeah with their same chips same company so I'm quite fond the of the quite fond of the ti voice the yeah me too. W nine Q Y Q <laughs> repeater. <laughs> Such fancy music. Oh, it's very similar mm -hmm. to the. Oh, I guess you're flying a ship again. Press any key. There's some nines and stuff. Some eights. What is the happening? Oh, he doesn't I'm know. A, I think I'm in the wrong joystick port. That could be. Uh, <laughs> Well, that's cool looking. What else we got? <laughs> so, also to get both joysticks, you yeah. actually had to do. If you want to use these joysticks, you got this little adapter. Yeah, and that thought and, was interesting because it's, it's your. Uh, yeah, and it actually, of course, is modern. Cause it's got URL sure, yeah, and it's um, uh, yeah, but it split it split off. It has both you, sticks and one port on this machine. Yeah, so. which is a little weird, but with yeah, that little is. adapter. It's not um, the Atari standard. Yeah, it's not the Atari standard. But with that adapter, you could easily do it. <laughs> the Atari standard was very well, popular all the way through the Sega Genesis. Oh, so yeah. Used it, too. Um, the funny thing is, if you really want to look at probably the most accurate joystick, mm -hmm. the TRS-80 is probably it. Oh, yeah. The analog ones yeah, are yeah, yeah, those was, really nice. Variable resistor all the way across there, yes. so just a switch. So, this is getting better the more we use it. It is. <laughs> it's shocker, right? Just needed uh, some for Blasto. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good graphic thing right there. Oh, it's from Milton Bradley, no less. Come and dig the music. So press the number beside oh. each of your choices. Oh, yeah. Okay. We like sluggish. We don't know this game. Yeah, I don't know this game at all. Tank trail several or none? <laughs> uh, one. I don't know. What did my music go? see high, Nine normal, distance. or low. Uh, let's go three. <laughs> oh, Ooh. wow. 
supposed to not blow up or something. I don't know about all this stuff. He plays Yankee Doodle. Very happy sounding. Ooh, ooh. Oh, that wasn't good. Oh, there it went. Yeah, it helps if you're in the right, the right port. <laughs> this isn't Yankee Doodle no more. No. I think that was just the let's go music. Do you just... It's very... It's like <laughs> some of it's really good in this. T- oh, you! Oh, that's bad. Mm. Now you Probably have 55. Have done that. Mm. <laughs> I don't understand the weird musical. It sounds moments. like a <laughs> demented circus. <laughs> <laughs> oh! I guess you blasto things. I imagine the goals to clear all the mines or something, so... It's like an early version of Minesweeper? Somewhat, I don't know. I don't know. Back, this is back from the area where you have to read the manual. Yeah. What's a manual? It's <laughs> 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 music is ridiculous, I agree with that. <laughs> I don't understand why the game's over. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't figured it out yet. I think you have so many shots and you have to do... Maybe there's some way to set off chain reactions. We don't know. Mm. I, I don't know. Who I knows? have to read the instructions. Yeah. Oh. We're so, just doing a, a show and tell. We're having a looky here. Yeah, so oh. these are the games I have well, right now. I've, I've looked at picking as up several were, new games. As you will. More, but, um, and there's, the games aren't that expensive or hard to find. So, you know, you can honestly... These computers here are not like terribly expensive Mm -hmm. still so yeah you know know. right i have to touch this right (laughs) sorry you're fired so um you know i i've still seen these you know even you know what was i looking today and there was some for like i think there was one for under fifty dollars that's not bad so they're not horrible or Hmm. hard to get a hold of Mm -hmm. there's enough of them out there and they're not i wouldn't call it though it doesn't have the 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 iconic history of like the commodore 64 or popularity or the, matters I've or, noticed. or the, the mass popularity of like the trs-80 for example yeah um or you know the atari world but um you know if you're trying to get into a computer in that era that's decent and mm-hmm. still works and it's not hard to work on right yeah, yeah. i go with something like this yeah, i mean it's a neat computer yeah. Indeed. Of course, Here's now in my head, I'm like, how do you, you know, write assembly for this thing? Um, other than me and Justin, so. That's not me, though. <laughs> nope, not you. <laughs> I'm older than you. Anyway. Yeah. It's, as I say that, walking around with a cane or something, I don't, but it feels like some days <gasps> it feels like I do. Um, three old biddies gossiping about nothing. <laughs> Boy, that really aggravated you. No. <laughs> it's hilarious. That's <laughs> nah, my TNA. It's so funny. <laughs> well, the people down there uh, in the padded rooms are getting awfully noisy. I'd tell them be quiet a second ago while you're talking. I'm, I'm starting to think they might I'm be in your head. I'm to hear some echoes again. Oh, no, they're not in, uh, in my head. They're, they're not in your head. They're, okay. they're in those tubes. They're trying tubes. to get into your head. They're in the tubes on YouTube. They are. They're in the tubes. Okay. Oh, they're in the bleep loop section. Yeah, there. it's yeah. time for that bleep segment bleep okay. of this episode. <laughs> Where we hear from you, the viewer of Three Old Tech Dudes. Ah. Echoes of the Asylum. Oh, I like this one. This is on Oscilloscope oh, no. Madness. The Oscilloscope uh, episode that oh, no. was a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, our bad, our bad. That's the same word twice. Thank okay. you, geezers. Thank you. You're, you're quite welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> The Chinesium <laughs> test instruments are now really affordable. Scopes and spec analyzers are now sub 2K. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thanks for your great COVID binge watching videos. Okay. That's all. Neat. I, I mean, that's true. I mean, you know, you can certainly pick up. I've picked up that one for which is yes. a very high frequency scope, but it is like one well, layer. Check so on I, these spectrum analyzers. That's, that's a. Oh, Je- that's Justin awesome. has one, but it's a vintage, not vintage, but a big hardware one. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> certainly not a sub 2K unit. No. All right. And then uh, JC Homesteady comments on ham radio entry level comparison, the yep. two meter mobile 
after you can preserve some video. Yep. Great video. Oh, I've jacked up my fruit. Here we go. <laughs> Great video. Newbie here. If I want a home emergency or a home radio for emergency alerts and weather and just listening, not communicating, what will you recommend? I opted to recommend, and we can recommend others, the Uniden BC three sixty five CRS scanner that has weather alert on Amazon for about eighty nine dollars. That will listen to anything those two meter radios will listen to and then yep. has weather alert. Mm-hmm. Which actually those radios don't have, at least most of them don't that I know of. So not weather alert. Got so, your bear oh, tracker. Yeah. That's it definitely yeah, it's one of the bear cats. Uh, Any uh, suggestions yeah. suggestions from you gentlemen? Um I'm not a scanner neither am I person. I'm not as knowledgeable. <laughs> I used Honestly, to be but I have one that, that, so I don't I have an old radio shack. Oh, so that, that unit of Bearcat will do the job. And there's yeah. other options. You just want to look for a feature that's weather alert, but any police scanner should pick up anything and be able to listen what to what those are really. so yeah. So yeah. there's all kinds of different things out there. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Um, well, and like we showed in a previous video, which I don't know when it'll air, but a previous mm-hmm. or maybe after this video, uh, <laughs> we have the Radio Shack AM FM radio yeah. with weather alert built into that. Mm-hmm. Yep. If you so want, I you know, but that won't pick up two meter. No, but it will pick It'll up. Give you AM weather. FM and the weather band. Yeah, and yeah. it had a weather alert as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, here's a there's a link to that below in the video as well. So if you want to tinker adjust. a little bit, you right. could use an SDR. Although you I don't could, know that yeah, that, use, that wouldn't do weather alert. Although there may be a way. Uh, I bet there's an app or a plugin well, for it, it one depends. of the various uh, programs yeah. and the like. So. Uh, uh, like a unit in scanner would probably do anything you'd really want to do. Yep. If mm-hmm. you don't want it, if you, transmitting is not your thing. Uh, you just want to receive that. And if you don't want do fancy it. features, you can usually pick one of those up in the sub fifty dollar range used. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, and if you want to, you know, to extend your range, you can put like a discount antenna, which you can buy. I don't know if Radio Shack has those anymore, but several places have. Yep. Like Parts Express, I think, has one. They'll pick, up, they'll pick up a wide range of um, frequencies very nicely. Oh, yeah. And they do actually you can transmit on those. I was going to say, um, if you do end up getting licensed, uh, eventually yeah. you would be able to transmit on discount. I used to discount very early in my ham career in 1998. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, very um, early, two meters. So. They're relatively <laughs> inexpensive. You know, if you get it outside, it will pick up a lot for very, very good distance. Yep. Um, so you can listen to a lot. If you're just listening to like ham radio, you can listen to two meter repeaters from a pretty good distance away at that point. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you kind of, you know, it's it, scanner listening, shortwave listening, ham radio, CB to a certain extent. It's kind of, you know, it's it's however much money you want to put into it. Oh yeah. Honestly, mm-hmm. you can put very little, or you can put a ridiculous amount of money. And I've had friends who've done both. Yeah. There are um, some very expensive scanners on the market. Yeah, yeah. sure. Well, especially when you things. start talking digital modes and things like that. <laughs> yes. Right. Ooh. Well, and if you're in a shortwave listening, you may want a very nice high-end. I mean, like, I think it's ICOM makes this thing. It makes a high-end receiver. Like that. That's, big receiver. You know, mm-hmm. Big receiver. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, the, the any of the Bearcat, unit and mm-hmm. whatever scanners would, would obviously work quite well. Um, oh, yeah. I don't know if radio shack has scanners right now i should look hmm. they might it's worth looking there too but so that used to be so. one of their bread and butter items yeah. Yeah. it used to be yeah um, awesome obviously you can go on ebay <laughs> yes yes uh, evil bay probably free you know facebook marketplace has stuff too oh yeah um, i'm sure depending on where you're at you may you know um have local ads or something like that and yeah you know, people they have that stuff and sometimes get rid of it and just, yeah they just look around yep mm-hmm. all right well if you have anything that you'd like to see from the asylum you don't get to pick but you have a chance if you make a comment on this video or any other yep. video about this computer or anything we talk about the comments on the any video we we, we yep. keep an eye on them so we, we see them yeah. we, we 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 do read them so and you know let us know, like, what's the what computer did you grow up with? If you had a computer, like I did, I actually grew up with originally, which really, I guess, the computer, but it's, you never really thought about it. I had the Atari twenty six hundred, yeah, and then I had the, um, I had a, the Timex Sinclair one thousand, which is the ZX eighty one, uh, and I had the Commodore one twenty eight. Oh, that's mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, uh, which I wish I still had. Yeah. Um, and I had TRS-80s. 
and a lot of other miscellaneous i had so many like i had the, the computer everyone thinks is like the really like hardest one to get right like the plus four and the commodore and the no. Commodore 16 yeah i had those they were terrible it's, they're collectible but they're not fun mm-hmm. no <laughs> right. they were and you know, it's like everyone's like man these really can actually do stuff i'm like yeah back in the day it was horrible yeah <laughs> i got no that thing and i'm like Ugh. <laughs> mm-hmm. well but anyway I feel a wave in the air. A wave of RF. What time is it, Justin? Dude, welcome to the waves. It's like 10, 15, man. <laughs> it's, it's a late welcome to the waves, isn't it? It's a late it? one for us. This is absolutely the longest shooting session we've ever done. Yes. So, uh, this is the segment of each episode where we welcome a new ham operator to the waves. And this week... This would be a Kilo India 5 Quebec, wow. Quebec Sierra, KI5 QQS. They're way up in the KIs down there in Texas land, five wow, country. Man. Michael Anderson of Austin, Texas is a new technician. Welcome to the hobby, sir. Welcome. wonder how close he is to Norm, KC9 CSC. Yeah. Hmm? Norm still wears his nine proudly, his heritage <laughs> number. <laughs> I say, Norm, you should let us know how far away he, yeah. he may be. He may know. And Norm's know. like, look at the map, you idiots. <laughs> no. <laughs> we, we don't have a map in here. Well, so there. Those, but, you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're just a root. Um, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Well, awesome. hope you enjoyed this one, guys. We'll see you next time. We'll have all kinds of new treasures coming down the road. Oh, yeah. Till next time, I'm Timmy. I'm Justin. And I'm Nathan. And this is 3 Old Tech Dudes. Thanks for hanging out with us here on 3 Old Tech Dudes. Please subscribe to us here on YouTube for more tech old and new. Tinkering at the workbench, repairs, ham radio, electronics, computers, and more. Please like this video and share 3 OTD with your friends to help us grow the channel. We tweet at 3 Old Tech Dudes 1 on Twitter. And you can keep up with us on Facebook. Just search for 3 OTD and look for our logo. Thanks so much for watching.